Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Busco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. So many, many months ago, I got six Chilean caps from my good friends at Creative Palette to review. This will be the fourth of six reviews about them. If you want to know more about Chilean wine in general, then please check out the first video in this series. And of course, this is a free sample provided to me. Neither Creative Palette nor the winery control how I review the wine or what I say. Today's wine is from a pretty iconic winery, Los Vascos. We are staying in the Colchagua Valley, and this is the last of the wines from there. So the history of the winery, as far as I can tell, actually goes back to the 1750s with the Antique family planting vineyards in the Perelillo area of Colchagua. They came from the Basque region of Spain and Los Vascos means the Basques. The website doesn't mention what grapes were used back then, but it does say that the very first French grapes were planted in 1850. FYI, it appears the original name of the Colchagua Valley is the Quinten Valley. The Lafayette part of the Rothschild family bought the property in 1988. Over the years, they've replanted vineyards and upgraded the entire operation. They eventually grew this to 640 hectares of vineyards. That's huge. It's considered one of the largest in Chile, and it's also in the Entre Cordilleras climatic zone. The soil here is mostly some kind of sand, a mixture of sandy clay soil and granitic sand. They have five varieties planted. Cabernet Sauvignon is 85% of the plantings, Carmenere is 5%, Syrah is 4%, Malbec is 1%, and Chardonnay is 1% of the planting. They do utilize drip irrigation in a responsible way also. Most of the vineyard is hand harvested into small crates. They also keep individual plots separate and ferment them separately to ensure quality and to determine which vats go into which wine. This wine and their top wine, Le D or Le Dix, are aged in barrel. The rest of the wines stay in vats and they make a total of around 450,000 cases a year. All right, so here are the stats for this wine. The 2018 Los Vascos Cromos Cabernet Sauvignon Gran Reserva suggested retail price is about $22. Comes from the Colchagua Valley. Since the entire vineyard is in the Perelillo Dio, I don't know why that's not on the label. Maybe some grapes come from elsewhere. Also, I seem to remember that it's not uncommon for wine areas in Chile to use larger, better known appellations. Some you'll find in other countries too. It's 85% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Syrah, 5% Carmenere. 50% of the wine is Asian French oak for 12 months. No word on whether it's first use, second use, whatever, you know, new. Uh, the ABV is 14.55, so very precise on that. The pH is 3.6, the TA is 3.15 grams per liter. The average annual production of this wine is 80 to 100,000 cases. All right, let's get into the wine. So, 14.5, you're a big boy, aren't you? I'm excited to try this wine. This is another wine that I, or at least winery, I'm very, I mean, I'm not familiar with as far as like I've had a lot of it, but the name is very familiar to me. And you know, we've got the Rothschilds involved here, so I mean, you know they're gonna. You know there's gonna be some quality here. There's gonna be some money spent, and the fact that this is you know under twenty five bucks, or it should be under twenty five. I'm totally. I've actually never had Ledi or Ledix or Dix. Um, shut up. But I would like to try it. The wine. All right, so. Uh, Kind of a moderate plus concentration of red ruby, more ruby than anything else. Uh, seems like kind of moderate, not quite moderate plus. It's not as hazy as some of the other ones. It's actually pretty decent. It's like more, not dull, but it's it's not dull. Let's put it that way. Um, and then, yeah, mo I would call I would probably call the tiering moderate plus. Not quite high, but I mean fourteen five is. So when we talk about 
the, the levels of alcohol, you know, moderate, moderate plus high. We have these kind of breakpoints that we each use. 14.5 is my breakpoint for high. Some people call 14 high. Um, so it, it's a matter of kind of opinion on that. There was no like, not that I know of, universal industry standard for it. Ooh, this smells really good. So moderate plus intensity is definitely youthful. Um, it does smell boozy, okay? But it's like this Kirsch Royale type of thing. So you got that raspberry, you got that blackberry. It's kind of ripe, riper in nature, but it's almost like a, or like, like a, like a, you know, like a cherry bomb type of thing, like, like Luxardo cherry, but you, you threw some, you threw some, um, like bourbon in there. Yeah. It smells very much like that kind of a rich, uh, flavor of a rich aromas. Uh, not much dirt really I mean not a lot of earth to it. I get a little bit of herbaceousness, a little bit of uh, tobacco, kind of greener in nature on the tobacco. It's just kind of a sweet tobacco, not really a green tobacco, more of a sweet tobacco. Take that back. Let's get on the palate. Oh yeah, this is not shy. Whew. 14.55, huh? There's some wiggle room there. Oh man, this is not shy. So you need to pair this with something like, yeah. Now I would pair this with like really rich and dense food. So let's talk about the flavors. Um, so you've got that kind of Luxardo cherry thing going on. More like Luxardo raspberry, okay? And Luxardo blackberry. Not really the cherry, but you get my, my drift. You get that syrupy type of thing going on. And it's not sweet. I want you to realize I'm not talking about like it tastes sweet. Um, it just has that flavor of it. And it, it, it's like, it's like bold. It's like in your face. It's not shy. It's like, it's like, I'm here to party. Let's, let's go. Um, yeah, it, it, it does. It does combine some herbaceousness to it. Like it tames that, that fruit forwardness with the earthiness and the non-fruit characteristics. Like it's not a fruit bomb. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like confuse this with like, like your stereotypical Australian Shiraz, right? That's just like fruit, usually. Um, or other New World wines that are just like so fruity and you have nothing else. There is a balance here between fruit and earth. It's just that the fruit is the main player. It's driving the bus, but on the bus, you got the earth and you got the herbaceousness kind of like mixing it up with the fruit. And, you know, they're all like getting together. I don't know. I don't know what that all means, but I thought it sounded good. Hmm. Mm. I got some chocolate going on here, almost like a milk chocolate thing going on. A little bit of caramel. Um, you've got vanilla, you've got clove, you've got cinnamon for sure. Um, a little baking spice going on here. Like it's only a couple bucks more than the other three, but you feel like there's a step up in wine making going on in the process, or there's a little bit more money spent on it. Um, considering how wineries can, you know, have economies of scale and they can, you know, they can maybe spend a little more money on something, but not charge as much because they're going to charge a lot more money for something else. So everything's going to balance out. There might be some, you know, a, a higher percentage of new oak to this than say some of the other wines. Uh, we don't know, or the text sheet didn't say how much was new oak. It just said it was, you know, French oak. Um, but yeah, rich foods for this. Um, I could totally see doing like, like, uh, like a big stew. Um, yeah. Thick steak, maybe with some like peppercorn sauce or a Bernay sauce on it. You want something that's, that's kind of bold to go with the wine. So yeah, you could do a steak, you could do a filet mignon, but the filet mignon, and I love filet mignon. It's my favorite kind of steak, but with a filet, if I was going to do that, I want something that's bold to it. I want like a, not just pep black pepper encrusted. I want like that along with a peppercorn sauce, right? A cognac peppercorn sauce on there. You know, I want like mashed potatoes or mac and cheese. You know, I love green beans. I love corn, that type of stuff. I love spinach, but I feel like they would get lost in this wine. You need something with like starch and fat and stuff that's really gonna like go play nice with this. The tannin, speaking of fat, the tannin is actually really, really nice. There, it's not like going over the top. Like the last week's wine, I was saying that I could, the tannin was getting up there and I was kind of wondering if it might be because I was drinking all these cabs, 
This one is like, it's back to where the first two wines were. It's there, but it's not like in your face. It's, it's, it, it's really well integrated. Like I didn't even think about it till now because we're talking about food. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's there. I feel it. I get a little more of that, that bell pepper, that kind of greenness. It's, it's kind of presenting itself. Probably it needs a little more air to, for that pyrazine to kind of guess, interact. I'm not sure about that part, about how pyrazine in a wine really uh, reacts to oxidation. But I do know that over time it will, it will fall and there's, 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 it, 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 it's present or not in certain grapes. And it's more present for certain, you know, out of certain um, things in the vineyard going on and certain things going on uh, in the wine afterwards. I'm not going to get through it because I don't really know it super intimately to really explain it properly to you. But it's there. Um, but yeah, like I can see like a peppercorn steak, maybe even like you get like a chimichurri, chimichurri sauce. That's more Argentina though, right? Yeah, it's more Argentina than, than Chile, if I remember correctly. But you get like a chimichurri sauce in there. You get some type of like jalapeno uh, mac and cheese type of thing. If lobster's your thing, I guess you can throw some lobster in there, but no, no lobster for me. But some bacon in there, some some a little bit of jalapeno, maybe some hatch pepper, uh, maybe some some uh, um, not cilantro, uh, some type of uh, some other chili. I'm, I'm trying now. I can't uh, serrano. I guess I'm like serrano and ooh serrano. That'd be awesome. But yeah, you throw that in there, or maybe or maybe like it's with the steak or with the sauce. You get some pepper in there, not super over the top. You want the flavor, not necessarily the heat. Um, you got that going on. Yeah, I, I think that would be that would be like the ideal meal for me. Like I really want to go get a steak for dinner tonight, but I can't. Not making that Morton's manager money anymore. So uh, hey, I'm not destitute. All right, but uh, I used to make a lot more money, and I could totally have afforded a, a, a meal like that. I probably would have gone to probably would have gone to Morton's and like give me some steak. Yeah, this is this is really good wine. Um, I think it kind of punches above its weight. This is a wine that if you're finding for like twenty two to twenty four dollars, um, it, it's fairly priced. If it was higher, I would be like, yeah, it's. I think it's worth it. I think it's actually worth a little bit more than twenty five dollars, twenty two dollars. I think it, it's worth upwards of thirty to forty. Forty is a little stretching it a little bit, but um, but it's kind of knowing the background of the wine and what goes into it. Um, I could see that they could charge that if they wanted to. Of course, in the winery, it's probably not even close to that. This is the import American price. So you have to figure out all the markups that happen between the winery and your retail shelf type of thing. Yeah, it's good. All right, it's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And then tell your friends, and we'll see you next time.